Okay, this is problem number 52 from chapter 2. And the uh, problem, I'll read it to you, it says a 0 0.01677 cubic meter tank uh, contains one kilogram of refrigerant 134A at 110 degrees Celsius. Determine the pressure of the refrigerant using A, the ideal gas equation of state, and B, the generalized compressibility chart. Compare your results with the actual value of 1.6 megapascals. Okay, so here's what we have. The tank is at temperature 110 degrees Celsius. We're dealing with R134A. The volume of the tank is 0 0.01677 cubic meters, and the mass is a kilogram. All right, now the 110 degrees Celsius, since I'm dealing with the ideal gas law, I should immediately just go ahead and change that to Kelvin. So let's take that and add 273 to get a total of uh, 383 Kelvin as the temperature uh, in the tank. If you look up some properties for R134A, you find that its gas constant R is 0.081 for 9 kilojoules per kilogram per Kelvin. And since we're supposed to deal with generalized compressibility, we'll have to deal with critical pressure and temperature. So you may as well grab those. They're in the table uh, in the back, close to where you find the gas constant. In fact, it's the same page. So the critical temperature is 374.3 uh, Kelvin. And the critical pressure is 4.067 megapascals. Oh, so, okay, so we're supposed to find the pressure with the ideal gas law and then finally with generalized compressibility. I'll just use the letter Z to remind us that we're supposed to use compressibility. And remember, compressibility is just basically a correction factor for the ideal gas law. All right, so if we're supposed to find the pressure, then for part A, we can simply solve the ideal gas equation and say that the pressure is MRT over V. Uh, we know the volume, we know the mass, we know the gas constant and temperature, so this is just a plug and show. A kilogram multiplied by R, 0 0.08149 kilojoules per kilogram per Kelvin multiplied by a temperature of 374.3 Kelvin, divided by the volume, which is, here it is, 0 0.01677 cubic meters. Let's check our units. Kilograms go away, Kelvin go away, and a kilojoule per cubic meter, what is that? Well, a kilojoule is a kilopascal multiplied by a cubic meter. Pardon me. So the kilopascal state, the cubic meters go away. So all we're left with here is pressure in kilopascals. Uh, if you plug it all in, what you find is that uh, this is 1.861 megapascals. Notice I went ahead and changed it. I divided by 1,000. So I can write down megapascals since the, uh, the answer is given in megapascals. Okay, so there's our uh, uh, audio gas result. Let's find out what the compressibility chart has to say about this. Now remember for compressibility what you do is you have to calculate the so-called reduced temperature and reduced pressure. Okay, so we start off with the reduced temperature and we calculate that as the temperature of the gas, the actual temperature, the 383 Kelvin, divided by the critical temperature. So basically all this is, this ratio is just a measure of how close the gas is to its critical point. Because the closer the gas is to its critical point, the worse it misbehaves. All right, so 383 Kelvin divided by 374.3 Kelvin is about 1.023. Now this is bad news for us in a sense. It means the gas is probably not behaving all that ideally because we're right on top of the critical temperature. Well, what about the critical pressure? Well, we have a small problem because we don't know the pressure, right? And what we have to do is go to the generalized compressibility chart. We need two pieces of information, 
so that we can locate a single point on that chart, read off the compressibility factor, and then use that compressibility factor to correct the ideal gas law. Okay, that's how that chart works. So what can we do? Well, if you're in a situation where you don't have the pressure so that you can calculate the reduced pressure, then what you do is you use the so-called pseudo-reduced volume. Now don't uh, worry too much. If you don't remember all this, it's pretty easy. You don't really need a whole lot of notes for this. If you look for the generalized compressibility chart in the back of your book, you'll find that it is on page 863 in the uh, appendices. And in fact, it only appears in the metric appendix. It, it does not appear in the English appendix. Why is that? Well, the reason is because the generalized compressibility chart is dealing only with non-dimensional numbers. Notice that the temperature in Kelvin over the critical temperature in Kelvin give us a result that is non-dimensional, has no units. So you could do this in English units, and as long as you use absolute temperatures, of course, you would end up with a unitless thing as well. And the chart would be the exact same shape. So there's no need to repeat that chart in uh, the English appendices. But note, that is on page 863. Probably should tab that in your book because it's a a handy chart to reference. Okay, so back to our problem at hand. We need another point on that chart. Basically, this just tells us a line, right? Because the lines of constant uh, reduced temperature are the lines that slope, well, let's see on the video, it's the opposite way, but they slope uh, down and to your right. Okay, so anyway, uh, we need the pseudo reduced volume because that will allow us to calculate the uh, or to find a single point on that chart and then uh, find the correction factor. So we need the specific volume divided by the gas constant divided by the critical temperature, which itself has to be divided by the critical pressure. Now don't panic, you don't have to remember this. You don't have to remember this. Both of these are in the inset, in the box, on page 863 off the chart, well, on the chart, on top of the chart. So you don't have to memorize these, you just need the page number for compressibility. Okay, so, how do we get the specific volume? Well, the specific volume would be the total volume divided by the mass. Okay, well that's easy enough. Volume per mass divided by our critical temperature, critical pressure. Okay, so this is what we have to plug in. Now the volume per mass is 0.01677 cubic meters per kilogram because we have one do it this way, per one kilogram, because we actually have one kilogram of mass, divided by the gas constant, 0 0.08149 kilojoules per kilogram per Kelvin. Let's see, so that takes care of R. We need the critical temperature. That's 374.3 Kelvin. And I know I'm going off the video now, so I'm going to put the... Uh, critical pressure uh, beneath the critical temperature because that's where it belongs. And now uh, we have to be careful here. We've got the critical pressure as 4.067 megapascals. I'm going to write that as 4,067 kilopascals so that I can be sure that my units are consistent. Now let's cancel some units. The kilograms in the denominator of the denominator would cancel with the kilograms in the denominator of the numerator. The Kelvin cancel. The kilopascals, let's see, how would that go? Well, they would end up in the denominator of the de denominator, which means that they would end up in the numerator. So you'd have kilopascals times cubic meters, which are the same thing as a kilojoule. So all of our units go away here for the pseudo-reduced volume, which is what we expected. And so the pseudo-reduced volume comes out to um, 2.236, and it is a non-dimensional thing. Now, if you go to page 863, you should be able to look up the pseudo-reduced volume numbers and the, uh, the reduced temperature. So let's see, I don't know if you can see this. Yeah, that's, that'll work. Okay, so the, I'll move, the, move it down so you can see. The um, reduced temperature is right here. It's 1.023. The pseudo-reduced volume is down here somewhere. I can't see it in my viewfinder. But in any case, the number is 2.236. Um, and so now let's find that point on this chart. Let's see if this works. Okay, so the reduced temperature, one. Well, let's see. Here's 0 0.9, 0 0.95.
here's 1.0. So right here is a reduced temperature of 1.0. So we're essentially on this line somewhere. Okay. Lines of constant pseudo reduced volume run this way. Okay. And so pseudo reduced volume 2.2 or so. Well, that's up about here. So we need where this line intersects this line. And if you look at that carefully, you should have your book at this point, and you read it off, what you'll find is that the compressibility factor comes out to about, let's see, these two pieces of information here and here tell us that the compressibility factor is about 0 0.86. You should pause the video at this point and make sure that you're capable of coming up with that compressibility factor from these two uh, uh, bits of data. Okay? All right. So, what does the compressibility factor do for us? Well, it allows us to, to correct the ideal gas law. See, the ideal gas law is not actually true. The ideal gas law is just an approximation. And so what the compressibility factor does is it says, well, if you take PV over MRT, you should get one. But much of the time, you do not. And notice this volume for mass would be specific volume, so let me change this to a lowercase v. I use a, an arm on the v to make it a lowercase, so now that's volume for mass, which by the way is just numerically 0 0.01677 cubic meters per kilogram, because we only have one kilogram in this problem. So really what we're, what we're saying here is z corrects the ideal gas law. Now what we really want it to do is correct the pressure. So let me... Uh, let me continue working here just a little bit. I'll get rid of some of these conversion factors. Um, what this tells us then is that the actual pressure, because see, this would be the actual pressure because we've corrected the ideal gas law. The actual pressure then would be equal to ZRT over V, where V is the specific volume. Now remember, RT over V, what is that? Well, we've already done that, haven't we? Because that's this right here. Well, how, how is that possible? I thought you had a V here, but here you got an M. Well, the difference is that this mass could come into the denominator of the denominator, and you'd have specific volume in the denominator just as it is here. So basically, this is the ideal, I-D-E-A-L, pressure, and this will give us the corrected pressure, where we've used the compressibility factor Z to correct the pressure. So basically all we have to do is take 86% of the pressure that we calculated in part A. If you do that, you find that the pressure, let me make sure this is on the screen. Yeah, it looks like the, it is. So the, the pressure that's corrected uh, is 1600.5 uh, kilopascals or 1.6 megapascals for all practical purposes. Now, if you look at this and you, you want to know, well, is it really? I mean, how good is the compressibility factor? How close is this? Well, they gave us kind of an odd number here. This volume is a kind of a weird number. They actually gave that to us for a very particular reason. The fact is, you can go to the back of your book and you can look up the properties of R134A. If you do that, You'll find the saturated tables, uh, let's see, I don't know if we need saturated or superheated, but we'll find out in just a minute. Uh, let's see, 